and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's episode, we are going to do an example with step functions and AWS SUM. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, so let's get started. <laughs> Like a second part of my step function video I did a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave you the link in the description box where I introduce you step functions in 2020. I have made many videos on step functions, but I think I never talk about some integration of it. I have talked about with serverless framework and uh, cloud formation, but never with some. AWS SAM has a native integration with step functions that allows you to define step functions as one of the SAM resources, so it makes it super, super easy to get this set up. So in this video, I'm going to uh, grab an application, uh, and this will be, this is a demo application I created some, some time ago for a webinar, uh, that is my continuation on my DynamoDB series where I create a Dynamo table that is like an Airbnb kind of fake and this is uh, like the initial part when we will uh, add a new property to the system this will validate if the owner of the property and the property are valid so this is a step function that has four functions two are validating one is the owner one is validating the property and then if everything is successful it will send a message to event reach that in the uh, in the hypothetical future it should be picked up by another microservice but we are not going that way we are just stopping there and if things go wrong it just uh does nothing in this case it just uh log in that it's something went wrong so let's go and build up the first thing i want to do is to create a new project so i will make a new directory i will call it demo step functions one just in case I have another one. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, demo is the functions one, and I will open it in Visual Studio Code. So here there is nothing. So let's create a new file. Let's create a template EML, and then let's uh, let's initialize this node privilege. good and then we need to uh, go to the template and start adding things so this is a sum template and then we want to have a step machine and inside the resource we will have a step a state machine this state machine will have four uh, functions and it will be a validation and i had it as a continuation of my, I'm making this whole app uh, with my Fire BNB app that I did many, many months ago where I built something with Dynamo. This is kind of a continuation of that. So this is a state machine that will validate if a property is okay. So it will run a validation on the user and a validation in the property. And if both things are okay, then it will send a message to an event bus and if uh, they are not okay, they will uh, send a message saying that they are not okay. So these are the type of express because we are not doing anything that should take for a long time. So that's, that's it. Then I will add here, uh, let's close the terminal, let's make smaller this. And then here I will add the definition of my state machine. So for that, I need to create a new folder and I need to create a new file called validator. And here is where uh, using this uh, state machine language, I will define the state machine. I have a plugin installed and here you will see that this drawing appears. This will render the state machine graph. So this is a plugin from my Visual Studio code. Uh, I don't remember what is the name of the plugin. Let's see if we can find it here. I think it's the, the AWS toolkit or that does this for me. So it should allow you to 
define the step function. So here it is, supports the step functions. With this toolkit, you can see the graph view visualization of the state machine. So this is the plugin I'm using. You will see it in action in two seconds when I paste the uh, state machine. So I just pasted it, but we will go into the step by step. But if I press this button, you can see here that uh, the state machine is rendered. The state machine is defined in JSON format uh, using this kind of uh, state machine language. And you can see that there are one, two, three, four Lambda functions. And then this is just a choice uh, state. But let's go step by step. So we start here in the beginning and we start at the parallel. So the kind of first step is this parallel step. Then here we have the states definitions and the first one is the parallel that is basically this one here and it will start running these two step functions at the same time. So uh, the next after the parallel is the validated. So this is a choice state, but let's go into here. We have two branches in the parallel, the validate owner and the validate property. And each of these are tasks that are uh, calling a Lambda function, a different Lambda function each. And then we can have end true because this is ending the kind of parallel branching. Then we have the validated and this is the type choice. So it will uh, decide based on the validation results if it go to successful or not successful. So I will have two values the validation uh, in the position zero and the validation in the position one, that is the results from the previous Lambda functions. And if both are true, then that means that the valid action is successful. But if one of them is false, then the validation is not successful. And this is how I'm using the choice state. And then we have the two different uh, tasks that are calling the two different Lambda functions. So this is a simple complex <laughs> uh, Lambda uh, state machine. It has a little bit of everything. It has choice, it has parallel, it has different uh, functions, and this is how you build it. So you can, uh, you will see that we will be ingesting the state that is coming from different Lambda functions. You will see that we are choosing between the outputs of one and, and uh, the outputs of the the functions into deciding what to do next. So this is a really cool way of using them. So now we have defined our state machine. So we need to add now the functions here. So now I will add the definition substitutions and these are the functions names. So these are the names that appear in the uh, validator uh, file. And these are the ARN of the Lambda functions that we will define in a second. So therefore, and therefore. The next thing we want to do is to define the events that trigger the state machine. And this is pretty cool because we don't need to have a Lambda function in front of the state machine. We can have an API gateway that when it's called, it triggers the state machine. So here we will have the validation API that is just uh, whenever we post a message uh, to the validate, it's just triggering the state machine. So this is pretty nice. Then I want to enable login in my uh, step functions. So because this is an express, we were not able to see all the different executions individually. So I want to enable my login and I want to get everything in a CloudWatch log. So I, just cre I will create this in a second. I will include everything and log everything. You can limit it later on. And then the final thing we want to do is to define the policies. This uh, step machine, as everything in AWS, is created with no permissions. So we need to give permissions to the state machines to invoke the Lambda functions and to access the logs. So this is what we are doing. We are using the policies, the invoke Lambda policy, and we are passing the Lambda names and then giving CloudWatch access using also the policies. So I hope this is well indented because we are moving to the next resource. So the next resource is our API gateway. I will put it here on the top because I like this is the API gateway that will uh, basically trigger the state machine. So we have seen that many times in my videos. Oops. 
Well, they want to be together. And what well, you are complaining. Oh yeah, I have not defined the functions yet. So before defining the functions, I will define the log group that we are going to uh, pass the logs that we give permissions to. And then I will be putting here the four uh, lambda functions. I will be putting the validate property function. We will create them in a second, but they are more or less the same. And you see here the validation successful function will put a message to event bridge. And that then will be picked up by the next microservice, but we are not focusing on that now. But then the other functions are just being invoked by the step functions. Well, they are all being invoked by the step functions, so they don't have an event trigger here and they don't have more permissions, but just this one, the successful one. The last thing I want to do is to do some output so I can see the ARN of the machine and also the API. And now we have our template defined. So we have the SAMS, the API gateway, the state machine, and the four functions are here. And then we have the outputs as well. So that's good. Now it's time to build our functions folder. And in here we need to add the four functions. So now I put the four functions here and if you open them, they have a lot of blah, 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 because this, as I said, is part of another project. Uh, but there is some examples in the inputs and how it should look. And then there's some login and then there is some validation done here. And yeah, so there is not uh, much. The same with the property, there is some validation then if something is not successful i'm just logging it and then if something is successful i'm sending the event to event bridge if you want to know more about event bridge i'll leave you a link in the description box so let's open the terminal again and let's go into functions and npm init yes so it has a package json there uh, so it can work with some and let's do some deploy and see if this deploys. So I will come back when this is deployed. Good, so this is deployed and we can see here the endpoint. Let's copy it and open Postman. So we have here the URL and then in the template JSON, we need to find what was the endpoint. It was a post with validate. Here. And then we need to pass some kind of body, but it should be a row JSON. And let's see what kind of body it should be here. <laughs> let's send the request and see what happens. Oh, so it's working. <laughs> you cannot see anything, but let's go to our AWS console and see what happens because this is asynchronous, that's why you cannot see anything. It just shows you that it started. So we are in AWS, let's go to step functions. We are in the wrong region. We deploy this to Ireland. So step functions. And this is our last one. So this takes a while for, for loading, but if we go to the link here we can go to cloudwatch logs and here you will see some login you can see all the states that have been executed so the execution start the parallel state enter the parallel uh, the task enter the lambda function schedule blah 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 you can see the details of everything and you can see the input for everything and if there is some output you can see it as well let's see task started here this is calling a lambda function. This is the, the input. And you can see here all the information. The monitoring and all that will take a little while now it loaded. So you can see here there is one execution and there is no errors and all that. You can see the machine definition here. This is the same we saw in the Visual Studio code, but you cannot see the executions. So that's something you will need to, uh, because it's, uh, it's express.
machine. So here you can also see the summaries of the logs and you can see that the Lambda function succeed and you can see the outputs, the inputs and all that. So this is a summary from the logs. Oh yeah. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. The code is available in GitHub. All the links are available in the description box of the video. And let me know what kind of topics you would like me to cover in the future. I'm always interested in building content that you want to watch. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao!